Creating a successful podcast is an exciting journey. And in this video, I'll guide you through the right steps to get started. Whether you're a seasoned content creator or a complete beginner, we've got you covered. I'm your host, Lloyd, not George, and I'm here with Spotify for Podcasters. In today's video, we'll cover seven key topics to get you well on your way to creating your first episode. We'll talk through podcast format, preparation, equipment, best practices, recording, post-production, and launch strategy. So without further ado, let's get into it. When you're getting started, you need a solid foundation for your podcast. In this chapter, we'll iron out your podcast format to ensure that your episode is as engaging and impactful as it can be. When we talk about the format of a podcast, we're referring to the way your content is organized and presented to your audience. For instance, if your podcast is about mental health, would it be better suited as an interview-based show where you bring in experts or individuals with personal experiences for each episode? Or perhaps a solo podcast where you share your insights, research, and perspective on different mental health topics. Here are a few popular formats to consider. The Roundtable Podcast. This often involves multiple people having casual conversations. The Narrative Nonfiction Podcast. Think of this like a documentary. The Fiction Podcast. Fiction podcasts are like movies, but for audio. The Reformed Podcast, which is great for content creators who like to make audio versions of existing video or written content. The format you choose will shape your podcast identity and can significantly influence how your audience engages with your content. An interview format fosters a conversational tone and can provide diverse viewpoints, while a solo format allows you to dive deep into topics with a personal touch. Remember, the format isn't set in stone. You can always evolve and adapt as you grow in your podcasting journey. A podcast schedule can be a valuable tool to help you stay organized and manage your podcast workflow efficiently. It's also the best way to ensure that creator burnout doesn't creep up. The most common publishing cadence in podcasting is weekly. First thing in the morning during the work week. Once you've got your ideas in place, it's time to prepare for your podcast launch. Now that you've decided on your topic and are gearing up for your podcast launch, let's talk about podcast branding. Your podcast name is like the front door to your content. It's what catches the attention of potential listeners. So it's essential to get it right. When choosing a name, consider the following. There are typically three categories to choose from when naming your podcast. Creative. These names are imaginative and unique, often sparking curiosity. Descriptive. These names clearly convey the podcast's content and purpose. Your name. Using your own name, especially if you're well known in your field or as a content creator, can add a personal touch. Here are a few tips to make sure you get it right. Keep the name succinct, ideally four words or less so it's memorable. Ensure that your podcast name is easily searchable. Think about the keywords people might use when looking for content like yours. Practice saying the name out loud. Make sure it's easy to pronounce and doesn't lead to any confusion. Before finalizing your podcast name, do some research to ensure it's not already taken. Also, gather outside opinions to get a sense of how it resonates with others. Choose a name that aligns with your content, both now and in the future. Your podcast may evolve, so consider how the name will accommodate those changes. The podcast description is your opportunity to convince people to listen to your show and make it stand out from other podcasts. Don't overthink it. Keep it clear and engaging. It should provide a brief yet compelling glimpse into what your podcast offers. This is especially important for SEO purposes since it's how search engines and podcast platforms index your content so it can be found. If possible, keep your description to a maximum of 100 characters. For the best results, make sure to include the following in your show description. The name of the podcast host, topics covered on the podcast, easily searchable keywords, and links to your socials. Now let's talk about cover art. Your cover art is an important part of your podcast strategy. It's the first impression of your podcast, so make sure it stands out and represents your brand. In a world that's audio first, your cover art is one of the few visual canvases for your show. You can use any image editor you feel comfortable with. There are several tools online that you can use to design your podcast artwork. When crafting the cover art for your podcast, make sure that these three things are top of mind. Make it stand out and easily recognizable. Consider a visual cue about the podcast's theme or niche. Quality matters. 
The standard minimum resolution for podcast artwork is 3000 by 3000 pixels. Keep it simple. Straightforward designs with minimal clutter work the most successful and effective. Let's talk about some of the essential podcast equipment you'll need to get going. Your choice of microphone plays a pivotal role in the quality of your podcast audio. Here are a few options to consider. Believe it or not, your smartphone can be a great starting out point. Using a phone is convenient and it's a low cost way to start your podcasting journey. If you're ready to invest a modest amount of money, USB microphones offer a significant improvement in audio quality. Since most cell phones are now embracing USB-C cables, this makes it incredibly simple to use high quality microphones and your cell phone. For podcasters aiming to top notch audio quality, a professional XLR microphone is the way to go. Whether you're starting out with a phone or a microphone, focus on your content and storytelling skills since they are the heart of your podcast. Your equipment can evolve as your podcast grows. So you've got everything you need to capture a high quality episode. Here are a few best practices when it comes to recording. Where you record your podcast is crucial in creating high quality audio. Make sure you choose a room or area that minimizes external noises and echoes. Walk-in closets due to their compact size are excellent choices for recording. Also, make sure that the noisy appliances like fans, air conditioning units, or other distractions are either removed or turned off. A quiet environment is essential for clear audio. If you're looking to further improve your recording environment, consider DIY solutions. Use furniture, pillows, rugs, blankets, or even clothes to absorb noise and minimize echoes. These makeshift soundproofing measures can make a significant difference in the quality of your audio. One of the most important things in your episode is how it starts. Your intro should hook your audience either by explaining what they can expect if they listen to the rest of the episode or by playing a snippet from the most engaging part of the episode. Just as important is your outro. By the time someone makes it to the end of your episode, they're likely a true fan. This is the perfect time to ask your listeners to follow your podcast so that they're notified the next time that you publish an episode. To keep listeners engaged, I recommend that you break your episode into segments. Podcast segments add variety and break up episodes into easily consumable portions. The production process can get pretty involved, so you wanna make sure that you're set up for success. Here are some tips before you hit record. Before you start recording, it's essential that you have a clear plan in place. Consider the following. Write down all of the aspects of your podcast that are repetitive. For example, your introduction and outro. This will allow you to record straight through, minimizing the number of edits that you'll have to make in post-production when editing. You'll wanna test your equipment 15 minutes before you're slated to start recording. If you're interviewing a guest, this will give you enough time to ensure that everything is working as it should. Click record as early as possible. You'll be surprised how many times podcasters forget to hit record. Video is becoming such an important part of podcasting. Video gives you the ability to share your content on other social media platforms, which makes it more likely for people to discover your content. While video does increase the exposure of your show, there are several audio only podcasts that perform really well. If the idea of adding a visual element to your podcast sounds intriguing, there are a few key aspects to consider for your video setup. Let's explore what you'll need. Lighting. Consider investing in a studio light with a softbox or for a budget-friendly alternative, natural light or well-positioned lamps can work wonders. Your podcast branding can be a great starting point. Consider the colors and decor that would fit with your theme for a cohesive visual experience. Ideally, you'll want either a DSLR or a mirrorless camera to record your podcast, but at the very minimum, your camera should record in 1080p resolution. If you're using a smartphone to capture video, grab a mount so your phone will be secure and stable. Oh, and if there are multiple people, make sure that everyone has their own dedicated microphone. By considering these factors and investing in the right equipment, you can successfully venture into the world of video podcasting. With a well-lit, thoughtfully decorated space and the right audio and video gear, your video podcast can be visually captivating and an engaging experience for your audience. Once you've recorded the episode, it's time for post-production. I like to break up post-production into three phases. Number one, editing and cutting. 
This is the first pass. You'll listen to the episode and trim the beginning of the episode exactly when the podcast starts. You'll then want to continue listening and remove anything within the episode that doesn't belong. For example, if you take a break in the middle of the recording to drink water, or if you stop talking because there's a loud ambulance passing your home, that would be great to cut out of the episode. You'll want to add background music and transitions. You can use music to enhance the flow and atmosphere of your podcast. At this stage, you've cut the content so you have a concise podcast episode. Now it's time to make sure all of your levels are good. I normally don't listen to the full episode for the third time. I just use the cursor to click different parts of the episode using the waveform. If you see certain spikes in volume or areas where the volume seems to be low, I'd listen over that section one more time to ensure everything is leveled and sounds good. With a freshly produced podcast, it's time to host and publish your show and then make it searchable on podcast directories. Here's a quick breakdown of what these are. These are apps where people can find and listen to your podcast, such as Spotify, but it's not necessarily hosted there. Now, a hosting service, these are platforms where you can upload and distribute your podcast via RSS feed, which is kind of like an ID for your podcast. Most hosting services include storage, distribution, audience analytics, and monetization options. You can use the Spotify for Podcasters app to distribute your podcast to all of the popular podcast platforms like Apple Podcasts, the Pocket Cast app, Overcast, and so many more. Here's a quick overview of the process. Fill in your episode title and description. Craft a compelling episode title and provide a concise description that entices listeners to click play. Fill in season and episode number. Organize your episodes by assigning a season and episode number. This makes it easier for listeners to navigate your content. Upload episode specific artwork. For more personalized touch, you can upload cover art specific to each episode. This can enhance the visual appeal of your podcast. Set your episode to publish now or schedule for later. Decide whether you want your episode to go live immediately or at a specific date and time. Scheduling can help you maintain a consistent release cadence. With those final touches, your podcast is ready to hit the airwaves and reach your audience. Take the time to ensure that your content is engaging and well-prepared and you'll be well on your way to a successful podcast launch. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more valuable content on podcasting. And let me know in the comments, what do you want your podcast to be about? Thanks for watching and best of luck with your podcast show. Peace.